How would you like to know exactly how much it costs to send in each of your ASINs for Amazon FBA? If you'd like to be able to do that, this Excel sheet does just that, this Excel system actually. And um, basically, you're able to list the SKUs that you're sending in for each FBA shipment. And so this is allowing you to actually keep track of your shipments and exactly which ASINs were in each shipment and the cost, the actual shipping cost broken down per ASIN. And so on the shipment sheet, you'll enter the shipments in and the cost of your shipments, the shipping cost. Um, the total number of ASINs will be added up for each shipment and then the shipping cost will be divided over the ASINs. But also per ASIN, the label fee, the prep fee, all the different fees that you might spend in sending and having the uh, ASINs processed will be counted as well, which will allow you to actually get a total cost for each ASIN. Also, you can include removals. I have a, a removal sheet where you can put in your removals data. And the thing is, it's not that you're just entering the data, but the data is being all calculated in together uh, on an ASIN cost summary sheet, which is then actually telling you for each ASIN, um, the number of ASINs you've, you've shipped in in a certain period of time. You can actually put the date range. And for that date range that you choose, it's going to tell you how many ASINs you shipped into Amazon, what it cost in total for the shipping cost, the prep fee, the label fee, um, altogether, the number of ASINs that you removed, what was your removal cost for those ASINs, and then a net cost. So this is really, um, if you're doing Amazon FBA, I think this is a good way to really organize your FBA shipment data. But if you'd like more details on how it actually works, then keep watching the video. I'm actually going to show you exactly how it works. So now I'm going to show you how the system works. Now for convenience, I already entered a sample shipment. And this is simply just the shipment ID, which you'll get from Amazon, the FBA shipment ID. You can put the weight in pounds and ounces, and it will calculate the total shipping weight for you. And you can enter the dimensions, um, the length, width, and height, and it will calculate the volume. Now, um, if you require different, um, this is for me, I'm in the US, but if you're outside the US and you have a different requirement for weight, you can uh, contact me about that individually. Um, and then, but the most important thing here is the shipping cost. Just meaning in actually calculating the cost, you need the shipping cost. So you put the shipping cost, you can put the service, uh, shipping service if you want. The ship date is important, very important. Um, the label number, you don't really need to do this, the box label number, but you can put that here as well. And the tracking number, um, you might need to do it depending on how you um, run your particular business, right? Now the total number of ASINs and the shipping cost per ASIN unit will be calculated once we enter in the ASINs for each shipment. So the way that we do that is we're going to take the shipment ID and copy it, first of all. And I'm going to go over here to SKUs per shipments, and I'm actually going to paste that ID right here for FBA shipment ID. And what I'm going to do for this shipment, again, repeat the date, and I'm going to actually list the ASINs that are in the shipment. So let's start with, and I'm only gonna do two ASINs just to make it quick, so I'll do this ASIN. All right, so just imagine you're sending this ASIN in. Here's the link. Amazon sometimes creates an FN SKU if you're labeling the item. Um, I'm going to skip that. The number of ASIN units is really critical, right? So it's the number of sellable units, as they call it on Amazon, that you're sending in, right? So if you're sending in one um, item for each ASIN, it's just the number of items, right? So right, if you're selling a, a multi-pack, it's a little different. Then you have to do the math to see how many ASIN units you're actually, how many ASINs you're sending in, right? And that's the number that goes here, all right? Now, um, if you're doing a label fee per ASIN, if Amazon's gonna charge you some kind of label fee, if you're having them label stuff for you, um, you can enter that as well, right? If there's some kind of prep fee, you can put that as well. So say 30 cents and 50 cents now, uh, this right here, shipping cost per ASIN unit, this actually comes from the shipment sheet where it's $10, right, for the whole thing, for this whole shipment. And then it's taking the $10, and now it, it you'll notice 
it went from zero to five because now you have five ASINs that you're sending in and 10 divided by five is two dollars so it's gonna say shipping cost per ASIN is two dollars so over here that's reflected okay because this ASIN is the same shipment all right so it's two dollars for each ASIN multiply by the five ASINs that you're sending in that's what ten dollars right plus we have to add this 280 okay as well so that's how it comes to fourteen dollars right two times five is ten um, and then 280 by five all right is what gives you the um, fact shipping cost per AC unit is two dollars um, total cost is 280 sorry so it's just 280 times 5 okay and that gives you 14 5 times 2 is 10 5 times 80 cents is four dollars that adds up to 14 dollars okay so um, you just take the total cost and multiply it by it, the number of AC units right so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add another AC so I'll just whoops I think that might be the same one let me get away from there and I just need the ASIN just so I can fill up the sheet and make it look more realistic with the real ASIN right and now the shipment ID if if we're still in the same shipment which we are then we're just gonna copy this and paste it it's still the same shipment okay so the shipment ID we repeat it different ASIN same shipment right it could be five units let's say again notice the shipping cost per ASIN unit has dropped because the more ASINs you send in the same shipment if the cost um, you know the cost is the same ten dollars okay now it's ten divided by five now it's gonna be one dollar the thing um, you have to understand is that I'm demonstrating this but I'm not actually doing the shipping process as I demonstrate. So in reality, what would happen? And if you've done FBA shipments yourself, you know this already, uh, is that you would have already done this part before this part, actually. So actually what would happen in reality, as you're going through the inventory uh, ship process, you would be telling Amazon what ASINs you're going to send and how many, right? And so you would be already building this list. So by the time uh, you get to the part, so by the time you get here, you already have the package ready, right? The shipment ready. You already know the weight because you've put the items in the box, okay? And at this point, you already know the weight, okay? You know how big the package needs to be to fit the items and everything, okay? So really, you do this first. And for this video, um, I started off by giving you the shipment ID and all that because I just wanted you to see the, the structure, right? So that's something I need to make clear that you first will need to do this, right? Put your ASINs, build your ASINs on the shipment. Physically, you would physically have to do this to know physically how much the, the shipment is going to weigh and, and the size of the shipment, right? Okay, so, so now we know... Um, the shipping cost of the whole shipment we've got all the shipment data and we've got our SKUs everything is good all right um, this one is five dollars total cost because it's five ASINs times one okay great um, now something else that can happen with the ASINs is that they can uh, require removals so I threw in this removal section as well so that um, because to me a removal is basically the opposite of a shipment right so you ship things you ship things into Amazon then you remove them from Amazon so I felt that removals should be part of this so let's say fine I'm sending in five uh, units of these ASINs but maybe I'm also removing an ASIN right so I'm gonna take this put it here and maybe I've got some removal that's going on maybe it's just one unit that got damaged or something maybe I'm potentially it depends on what the situation there might be a cost for the removal there might not be for the purpose of demonstrating that spreadsheet I'm gonna go ahead and put a cost of three dollars 
okay? And what you will see is that now we have a cost, removal cost for that ASIN. So this is the ASIN cost summary sheet and basically the purpose of this sheet is to actually summarize all of the costs per ASIN over a period of time. So as you can see here, I have July 1st to July 31st and for each ASIN, once you put these ASINs in, it's telling you how many were shipped. I've got the total of the cost of sending these into Amazon per ASIN, the, um, the total cost of all the ASINs that were sent in, and then the total cost per ASIN, if you just use division, um, you get the cost per ASIN. And then the number of ASINs that were removed in this time period, the total removal costs in this time period for that ASIN, and again, just divided over the number of ASINs to kind of give you an average removal cost per ASIN. And then a net cost per ASIN, meaning you spent this much to send the ASINs in, and then you spent this much having those ASINs removed, and that gives you a net cost. So the idea of having removals as well as sent to Amazon cost for each ASIN is to give you an idea of how much each ASIN is costing you uh, as far as either sending it to Amazon or even retrieving it if you you know removing your inventory as well so um, the date range you know affects things so if you change this to uh, a different date depending on what you entered in fact if you take out the end date you'll see everything goes to zero but what I wanted to mention is that if you look at these shipment dates for example I have the 17th for these two and then the 20th for that one if I were to just do the first to the 17th, what will happen is the one from the 20th will not be included, right? So if we go here, uh, actually shipments, you'll see that the one from July 20th, all right, where I sent in, what was it? Um, some other stuff, which I think is somewhere here. I actually have to see. This is LOY2, yes, over here, 10 ASIN units you'll see that over here, now there's less uh, units showing up, right? Because I'm not including the 20th, but then if I include the 20th, right, we're back to 15 ASIN units again, right? So this is great. Um, if you imagine once you fill in your shipments with a lot more shipments and a lot more SKUs and dates over a period of time, you will be able to instantly look at different date ranges, different months to see, well, how many did I send in and what did I spend sending in or what did I spend in, you know, in my shipments altogether, all right, which you can get also from here. Um, you can even use, there's something you can use, which is a um, built-in feature of Excel. Because I use tables in this particular spreadsheet, pre-formatted tables, you have what's called table design. All you have to do is click on the table. You go to table design and they have a total row. You check on this. And so you can also do um, a sum here if you want to see on your shipments page, for instance, the total that you spent in all your shipments, all right, all together. And then you can also filter these using, again, these are built-in features of Excel. And you can filter, you can do a date filter. And you can do this week. You could do, you know, really any filter you want, right? They have all these preset filters this month, last month, next month, quarters, years, all of that, right? So I'm going to clear that filter. So this is something you can turn on and off. You can actually leave it on and then if you want to add data, you can just use right click insert below to insert new data. But usually I just turn it off because as you add data, this is self expanding. As you add data, it will just automatically add another row. And then when you're ready for the total again, you just go back to table design and total row and your total section will come back. You can pick sum, you can pick average or whatever you want for that particular column that you're looking at. So between the um, arrangement that I already put together for you in these tables and that combined with the features that are already provided built into Excel, you can really do a lot with the system. All right, there's a lot you can do here in terms of uh, looking at your shipments, accounting uh, for your shipments, and also 
per ASIN. You know, I think that's really the key thing here that you can see what is this particular ASIN costing me as far as sending my shipments to Amazon. All right, so that when you go to do your profit calculations, you can look at the whole month. What did I get in sales? And what did it cost me uh, versus what did it cost me to actually send this ASIN in, right? When we look at the ASIN cost summary, all right? Or to even remove it. So you can compare that. You compare your sales against the cost for that ASIN. And then you can um, consider the supplier costs as well, right? And of course, um, if you've been on my channel, you might see I have other Excel sheets as well, systems you can use to take care of some, you know, of the other parts. But basically, this system here is for shipments, specifically sending in shipments. But I also have one where you can keep track of all your purchases as well. And um, in that sheet, you can put the ASIN for each item you purchase. So you can also track your supplier costs per ASIN uh, as well. So then combining all of those together, um, you can really get an idea of more accurate uh, calculations on profits for your business per ASIN for a Amazon FBA specifically. So that is really um, pretty much the purpose of this system and also in combination with um, some of the other systems I have. So if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, on this system or anything else I have just let me know and uh, go ahead and get a copy of the system um, there should be a link here in the description of the video where you can go to get a copy of the system uh, most of my systems um, real systems like this require some kind of really small super small uh, purchase donation and really that just helps cover the cost of, uh, first of all, sending these out because it does cost something to actually send them, believe it or not, uh, to a certain number of people. Also, um, just for the, it covers just the cost of the upkeep of everything that is involved in keeping this going. So it's greatly appreciated if you, you know, do that and you get a copy of the system. Um, I'm Mr. Mark. This is Excel for Amazon. I hope to see you around. You can contact me with my contact information um, below. And I also just look forward to seeing you around on the channel.